Okay, um, I think I just figured out how to use pause properly. Um, okay, so uh, let's do a little example here. Uh, suppose I have, you should watch the previous video if you just, if you, if you haven't seen it for a day or two, just so you know where we are. We're, we're talking about, um, we have a two predictor model um, and we'll look at B1 star the standardized version of the model is equal to this. And we would like to see, um, so I've written B1 star in terms of the co simple correlations between the predictors and each predictor in the response. And we would just want to play with some numbers here. So suppose that, um, so suppose R, Y1, Y is correlated with um, X1, say is 0.3. And R, Y2, suppose it's a little more correlated with X2. Okay, you can make even more extreme numbers. I didn't want to make it too extreme. Um, doesn't have to be very extreme for it to be interesting. So R12, say R12, so I'll just look at some different examples, is zero. Well, then we know B1 star is what? Right, 0.3, right? When they're uncorrelated, it's just the coefficient of simple correlation there. And then I have an SLR model. And it's just that. Um, okay. And uh, two. By the way, these co these cor these corresponded not the standardized variables, but the actual r, actual y, x one, x two. That's what those mean. If you, as you're reviewing this, so two. Um, suppose I have r one two now equals a half point five. Uh, so they're pretty correlated positively, and then I would get B1 star equals, well, if it's a half, then let's see, we have um, 0.3 minus uh, 0.35, so I get minus 0.05, so it's changed sign, and then I have divided by, so that's 1 over 15, so I get minus 0.067. So B1 star went from 0.3 positive to a slight negative, near zero, but slight negative. Okay, if you keep going, you can see it's gonna get more negative now. Um, let's just do a couple others. So suppose I go three, um, if I go R12 equals uh, 0.95, I get B1 star equals uh, minus 3.7 R12 equals 0.96, B1 star equals minus 4.7, R12 equals 0.99, I get B1 star minus 19.8, I think. Uh, you can see what's happening, it's getting a little unstable as I get higher. Um, a slight shift, which could be just uh, a little bit of an arithmetic or a, an experimental uh, error, leads to a big jump in the coefficient. So this is an effect of x1 and x2 being correlated. There's more going on here, and it's starting. You're starting to see it um, when in these kind of situations. Okay, if I had let's say r12 equals 0.991. Just a 10 to the minus third uh, could be a little error from five to six. I get B1 star, it doubles practically. I get minus 38. Okay, so what this tells you is um, when, um, when your predictors are correlated, you don't have this, um, this independence of of the coefficients. So one doesn't hold. So clearly, so when, and I didn't even use a high correlation, just, um, well, no, we did with some of these. So when, um, when, um, when uh, R12 not equal to zero, clearly one doesn't hold. And you should think of it, you can see things are getting, things get worse the more they are they are cor they are um, correlated together, so you get it holds even less as uh, 
as R12 goes toward 1, or minus 1. We went the other way. Um, the second effect about SSR is also not true. Um, see if I can, yep. So, and this we will not prove, but uh, just just um, write it down, and then I'll do um, an R video next, uh, summarize all this. So, second thing, so second result, also, let's write it down, also, two does not hold when uh, R12 not equal to zero. In other words, um, SSRX1 will not be equal to SSR x1 given x2. Um, in fact, okay, in fact, um, if they're positively correlated, so if Um, then, so, so one, if R12 is greater than zero, then SSR X1 will have this relationship. So if they're positively correlated and X2 is already in the model, then I expect SSR X1 to be greater than this, right? Because this will already capture some of the explanatory power of SSRX1. And two, um, if the other way it will be the other way, otherwise we'll show this with R, but we're not gonna prove it, SSR. Okay, maybe the third point to make, so final point, also if um, more predictors are added. The idea behind these results hold, but are more complicated. Because it's possible for X1 to be uh, uncorrelated with X2 and X3 individually, but um, when X2 and X3 are taken together, um, X1 is correlated with those two together. Um, so we won't get into that, but the thing is, um, the point is, by looking at the... Um, the separate cor the correlations of each of these, um, we should uh, we should be careful if they're anywhere away from zero um, about interpreting these results marginally. We have to look at the system as a whole system. We can still make all the tests. Everything we've said so far is valid. We're not going back on our word on any of the the F tests or T tests for significance. We're simply saying, be careful about uh, borrowing a marginal uh, a marginal F test uh, to make a conclusion about say a different model that uses that variable maybe with fewer predictors that those kinds of things won't be valid you have to consider every model separately which is probably what we should always do anyway um, uh, although it's tempting maybe to make um, to make to jump to uh, shortcuts and things if you if you think you could now, um, what's an example, a real-world example, where uh, core, uh, predictors are correlated? Here's an example. I think this is the way they use this in the book. You could think of lots of them. Um, so one is, say, we have an example. So an example, say, of uh, correlated predictors. is say we have crop growth equals uh, beta one times sunshine. 
plus beta 2 times rainfall. Now, while we may make sense to think of um, crop growth as being this much times sunshine, this much times rainfall, and certainly you could take the data and find uh, least squares estimators for this. These are so correlated that um, you have to be very careful about how you interpret the model because saying things like, well, what, look what happens if this hap if if I increase the sunshine and I, I increase the rainfall a little, but maybe that situation is just completely unrealistic. So you have to be careful about um, actually defining models and scopes of models when the predictors are uh, correlated. Um, I know this is really a jump here. This wasn't intended to be following here, but I feel like um, like I've done enough for now. I have maybe I'll have one more lecture later, but this is it for now for on chapter seven. And um, I'm going to do an R example where we can actually look at some of this stuff. So I will record that and post that one too.